It's early July and it's time for another garden update. You can see the roof of the shed back there, but not much else. So let's go take a look at what's been going on. Ochre likes it hot, so this is the time of year when it starts to shine. This year we have three crimson spineless and the rest are heavy hitter. Ochre has some beautiful flowers and the flowers are also edible. This is one of the heavy hitter ochre plants and as you can see it's living up to its name. Here's one of the crimson spineless and they're starting to produce flowers and ochre too. The tomatoes are still doing great. The first one there is Sleeping Lady and it's even got a few tomatoes way up at the top. Next to it is the Sun Gold and just beyond that is the Kookaburro Cackle and it's loaded with tomatoes. I'm guessing there's probably a couple dozen tomatoes on that plant. Last is Rosella Purple and it probably has about a dozen tomatoes. Here's a look at one of our two Baronia plants and this one has produced two tomatoes for us already. The taste of this one still reminds me a lot of Cherokee Purple. One of the parents of this one was Paul Robeson. This is our Tasmanian chocolate and at the bottom there there's one getting some color. This was our most productive tomato plant last year but this year it's not doing quite as well so far. While I was looking at the tomato plants I noticed this wasp on top of a leaf eating a caterpillar. If you ever notice wasps crawling around on your tomato plants they're probably looking for worms to eat. This one probably has a tomato fruit worm or an army worm. Because they do like to eat caterpillars, I usually leave them alone and let them do their thing. Since we had some cooler and cloudy weather, I decided to do a couple of graphs outside just for the fun of it. There's really no practical reason to do this graft. I'm just doing it for my own entertainment. Just because I think it would be cool to see a plant with three or four different types of tomatoes growing on it. Since it will be warming up with a lot of sunshine, I'm not real optimistic that these will even survive. One of the potato plants was dying back a little more than the rest, so I decided to see what was going on under that straw. I planted three types of potatoes and one of the red ones was showing right next to the Yukon Gold, so I went ahead and harvested it first. This plant is a Yukon Gold. I'm just going to pull it up and it requires no digging unless you count moving the straw aside with my hand. I'd say they're not too bad but I think they would have done better if I would have left them just a little while longer. Here's a look at the Yukon Gold potatoes after I washed them up a bit. They'll go very nicely with some of the other stuff we're getting from the garden lately. The sweet potatoes and the straw bales are doing great and keep in mind that there are two bales under each mound of vines that you see. And on each of the two bales we have three different types of sweet potatoes growing for a total of nine different types of sweet potatoes. And we also have some planted around the edge of the garden. Here's a look at the petunia tower that I built. I'm thinking I should have planted those red ones a little bit higher. They sure are putting out the flowers. Our watermelons are just now starting to grow a little bit, but they'll be spreading out and taking up some room very soon. At first glance, you might think that this watermelon has some disease because of all of the yellow spots on the leaves, but that's normal for Moon and Stars watermelons. They should have that same type of spotting on the watermelon. These are two of the Purple Flash hybrid peppers, and I've decided to keep the one on the right and not the one on the left. These are F3 Black Pearl hybrids and in this pot I have three and I think I'm going to eliminate the one with the green foliage. In the container right next to these I have two more and the one with the peppers all over it is starting to grow on me even though its foliage isn't quite as dark as I would like. I'm thinking about maybe keeping seeds from this one. Here's the jigsaw pepper. I thought I would give you a closer look at this one just so you could see how beautiful the leaves really are. On this plant, about half the plant is very light in color like you're looking at here and the other half of the plant isn't quite as light. 
I pulled some more of the carrots and as you can see they're getting larger. Especially that golden colored one. The peppers are still doing great. That's a sugar rush cream that I did a few graphs on. Jimmy Nardello, it's covered with peppers. Then we have the Heritage Big Jim Chili Pepper. And next to it, the Cubanelle. That dark colored one is the F3 Hybrid Black Pearl. Then we have Rowia and Blot. And back against the fence, I planted a bunch of sunflowers. There's even a Mexican sunflower in the mix. Next it we have Ahi Rico and it's getting huge and starting to cover a little bit of the Oda next to it. Then next to the Oda we have the Buenu Mulata and beyond that is the Albino Bullnose and I think you can see a couple of peppers on it. Just past the Albino Bullnose is the Lesia. Then we have Chinese Five Color and beyond that is the Mega Gold. Like that tomato plant I grafted three different types of peppers onto this one. The tomatoes and peppers over by the storm shelter are doing pretty well even though I don't water them as often as I should. We even have a couple of little peppers on this korbaki. This little variegated Rose of Sharon bush is getting ready to bloom and has little buds all over it. The flowers are double and pink. In front there you can see that the cucumbers are starting to climb their cage well. And the pole beans are growing very well but I'm a little disappointed in how many beans we have set on. We've got some but not as many as I would like to have. Just beyond the beans is the corn and some of that is getting over 8 feet tall now. That's the Japonica hybrid corn that I created last year. I plant flowers next to our garden to attract pollinators and this little bee is pollinating our cucumbers for us. We would be in big trouble without the bees. This is our first Japanese long cucumber. We ate this one already and it was very good, nice and crisp. It was finally time to harvest our first Matoyo eggplant. This particular eggplant is one of the mildest ones that I've tried. Not only are they a good eggplant to eat, but I think they're beautiful out in the garden. On that same plant that we harvested from, we've got a couple of little ones right behind it. This is a Rosa Bianca and it'll be ready to harvest soon. This container has some of my F4 Oda hybrids, but one of them's just a little bit weird. I don't know if you would call these ears or horns or what, but there's one on each side. Mrs. Midwest Gardener wanted me to show you some flowers she planted in her whiskey barrel. It's kind of a mixture of flowers and they're all doing very well. There is even a black petunia. The rose moss really hasn't started to bloom all that well yet, but when it does, this will be really pretty. Be sure to let us know how your garden's doing, and don't forget to like and share this video. We'll see you next time.